Hello, colleagues. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Eric Bergman, and I'm uh, based in the RIG office. And today, with our colleagues from Tallinn and Vilnius, we will be uh, hosting this webinar on real estate in the Baltics. Uh, we will wait for a few more minutes to uh, other colleagues to join us. Uh, and uh, before we start, uh, on behalf of our team, Happy New Year. Uh, we wish you all the best and uh, we wish you a little bit more uh, predictability in 2021 comparing to the previous year. I somehow feel we, we all deserve that. A uh, few technical things. Uh, we are streaming now on Zoom, but because of uh, your high interest to participate in this webinar and limited capacities of this platform, we also are streaming this online on, on Facebook. So if some of your colleagues cannot join us here, uh, just suggest them to use uh, Facebook, uh, Braille Forum page, uh, where live streaming is available right now. Also tomorrow, we will post this video presentation on YouTube channel, again, Braille Forum, uh, for your convenience. And uh, also tomorrow, we'll be sending out uh, our latest research on, on the Baltics uh, on all segments. And that will be available for you in your emails as of tomorrow. Um, well, uh, maybe a few more words on technical matters. Uh, our session will be roughly 40, 45 minutes, including uh, question answers and uh, if you have anything to ask, uh, I do encourage you to use uh, chat uh, option to write down your questions, either Zoom, again, Facebook in comments, and, and we will be happy to address your questions uh, to you. All right, let's, uh, I guess let's, let's, let's start it. Uh, and uh, I will give a brief introduction uh, and, and we will continue. So 2020, uh, it's, uh, Interesting year. Uh, I, in my personal opinion, it's going to be a year written in the, in the history books. Uh, so many things have happened uh, in so small amount of time, so compact amount of time. I mean, like fundamental things were happening global level. The way we shop, uh, the way we interact, uh, the way we work. I mean, literally, I, I could not imagine myself last year in January that I will give a presentation on the real estate market, staring at uh, the screen, uh, sitting alone in this room. But that's the reality we are uh, right now. And uh, we looks like we are adapting to that. Uh, and of course, besides uh, COVID pandemia, uh, there are many other things happening globally from political perspective, economical perspective. Uh, just if you would look at the last quarter of uh, 2020, uh, so many uh, events were happening and will influence 2021. Uh, just for example, the US presidential elections and the transfer of power, what we are seeing right now, the struggle on that. Finally, we have a Brexit deal uh, finalized by the end of the year. So now we understand what it, what it is. Uh, you know, if you look into a little bit more into zoom into the Baltics, uh, again, as, as globally as locally, we went to the second lockdown. Uh, we were uh, forced to uh, encourage to stay home by the government. Uh, we uh, sh retail shopping uh, were was restricted uh, to certain uh, limits. Uh, we. time what uh, we are facing and uh, and we will be talking uh, mainly in, in our presentation we'll be talking about uh, last quarter of 2020 but we don't we, we won't try to speak in numbers what we will try to do we'll try to give you some insights uh, or trends uh, how we see it and, and what we see and we will be talking about pretty much four themes uh, we will be speaking on uh, capital markets, and we will describe how e investment flows are going across the Baltics. Then we will touch offices, we will be touching retail and industrial. And with no further delay, 
I would like to give the floor to my colleagues, Margus, who will be speaking about investment. Margus, the floor is yours. Thank you, Eric. Yes, indeed. Uh, we had a very interesting, uh, challenging year uh, last year, 2020. But uh, if you look uh, from the investment point of view, then uh, it was actually quite good year. So uh, eventually the total volume of uh, uh, investments in Baltics reached, so to say, normal level, uh, one, one billion euros. And uh, with that, it's, it's being totally in line with, with a couple of previous years, 2018, 19. So something that uh, was maybe a little bit surprising, but then again, we of course all hoped it. Uh, in the middle of uh, the last year, there was quite high doubt that do we reach uh, do we reach one million one billion or not? Uh, because everybody was very cautious. Uh, there was a lot of uncertainty, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, by the end of the year, uh, many delayed deals, many new deals were uh, completed. And uh, that shows that actually investors are looking uh, way be beyond uh, this crisis. And uh, decisions are made not only uh, based on today's knowledge, but looking uh, several years ahead. And also there is a lot of uh, capital available still. So there is a need to invest. And that is also pushing pushing this uh, this side of real estate market quite uh, strongly, and we don't see any reason why this momentum uh, has to kind of change in 2021. Even considering the situation that now we have more light at the end of the tunnel, so to say, uh, regarding this COVID crisis, hopefully these uh, vaccines uh, will work. It will open up the uh, economy more, uh, more, even more, and maybe from the um, investment point of view, what, uh, what the one of the most important things is, is, is that it will open uh, this kind of cross-border uh, investment opportunities more than they are at the moment. So people can again travel, the people can go and see the properties, people can can interact with the properties uh, more more directly, and that will for sure kind of uh, help help uh, even more uh, investment market uh, turnover to be maybe even better than in uh, in uh, 2020. Uh, so as I mentioned, uh, there is still very high appetite uh, for uh, for investment opportunities, and the main problem is that uh, uh, the lack of uh, especially good high investment grade uh, products that has actually lasted already a couple of years, but has been even more, uh, more, more of a topic uh, last year and will be probably this year. So hopefully we will find more products for the investors. Good thing is that also banks are uh, very cooperative, so to say, and then ready to finance uh, deals conditions are, I would say, pretty okay. So what was feared that maybe interest rates uh, will go up and then the conditions get harder and harder and then actually uh, the information that I have for, uh, at the end of last year, I would say the conditions are quite okay. Of course, it depends on the property, it depends who is the, who is the borrower, etc. But I would say that uh, financing is clearly not the one that is kind of anyways hindering or uh, uh, making problems in, in, in investment scene. Uh, given the kind of challenging, uh, still challenging uh, situation, uh, it's clear that uh, in focus are more this kind of grocery retail or logistics and office. And that was seen also, already, also last year where uh, most of the top 10 deals were actually from office sector in politics. So that shows that the investors are not afraid that something will happen terribly in office sector. And then uh, we will talk about this, of course, later, but uh, still uh, life will go on, so to say. And of course, grocery retail, everyday life uh, and uh, logistics. This is something new. This is very hot topic at the moment, uh, most probably Maybe the most 
sought after uh, product uh, all over the Baltics. We see that many investors, for example, who previously didn't didn't consider logistics at all, or uh, it wasn't for sure in, in focus, are now focusing more and more also in logistics. But then again, I have to also say that not all is called the chains also in logistics. So uh, mm, uh, it is, this sector has its own kind of specialities. And if you don't know the sector very well, you have to be careful and, and uh, analyze a bit more uh, uh, because it's a, it's a often single tenant uh, cases, etc., etc. So there are certain specific risks uh, related to that also. Yields in general, I would say, are stable. Uh, if to talk about any kind of re yield compression, then I would say it's it's clearly visible and evident in in logistics sector. Probably here we will see new level, uh, new low level or record level uh, yields also in in Baltics. But then again, uh, in in general, I would say yields level will stay quite reasonable level also in in, in logistics. Uh, distressed assets quite big anticipation was involved in distressed asset last year but uh, as we saw not really really many many options were available maybe we can we can only mention uh, what was actually a deal also last year in in uh, riga was this riga plaza but in, in general i would say that uh, not many distressed properties came to the market maybe something will come up uh, in 2021 because probably there are some cases that might turn turn up to be a distressed cases but hopefully uh, owners banks etc will will manage the situation so that we will not have too many of these kind of properties and if to talk something about something new then i have to again Put an emphasis on on residential and also now senior housing uh, segment because uh, in Estonia, for example, we saw quite significant uh, rise of interest also in that sector, and hopefully, this will spread also all over Baltics and will create more opportunities for uh, for investors and all the other kind of market participants. So that's that's a quick overview from my side regarding uh, Baltic investment market. So the outlook uh, for 2021 uh, is, in my opinion, pretty good. There are no serious serious aspects that would would uh, make it uh, worse than it was 2020. So let's hope for the best and all the best luck for uh, all the market participants. So I give it the word back to Eric now. Thank you, Margus. Uh, I will continue on office part. And uh, if you to describe the offices across the Baltics in one sentence, uh, the good uh, sentence would be, the market is active and pipeline is ambitious. Uh, if to deep dive in a little bit more in details on this one, uh, then we usually would break it down uh, into two categories, supply and demand. Let me try, let me start with the su supply part. What we have observed uh, during last quarter of 2020 is uh, a lot of uh, office buildings under construction. Uh, I'll just give you a few numbers. Uh, in for Vilnius, for example, it's more than 225,000 square meters of office space currently under construction. And if we look at Tallinn, it's a little bit over 100,000 square meters. Uh, and uh, those numbers are big uh, comparing to the size of, of the Baltics. But if you would look uh, at the pipeline uh, in, in general, then uh, uh, we see that more offices uh, are coming to the market. Uh, to summarize uh, forecast for 2021-2022, we accept, accept uh, uh, roughly half million of square meters would be added to the stock uh, across the Baltics. And, uh, and the projects are really uh, different. Uh, the projects are very interesting. And we see that uh, our developers are mature and, and they really know what they are doing. Uh, and this is a great thing to observe actually on the market. One thing what stands out uh, and, and is in common for most of those projects is sustainability. 
and uh, the way we see it, it is actually driving uh, the, the development uh, philosophy. It's, uh, it's not any more kind of a marketing tool because if a few years back we would be talking about BRIM lead certification, that would be mainly kind of related to that. We see many developers uh, looking at sustainability as part of their DNA. Uh, we, uh, we see things like uh, well certification for, for buildings. Like uh, we, we see new terms like ends up buildings, like nearly energy uh, uh, zero uh, buildings. Uh, they are entering the market. Uh, they will be around us. And that's gonna be our, not just the future, it's gonna be our present uh, in, in the nearest time. Uh, but it also, all in all, it's uh, in line with the Europe uh, global goal to, uh, to be carbon neutral uh, by 2050, if not mistaken. Uh, and, uh, and our development uh, are going in line with that. Uh, if we're talking about uh, another thing, what is now happening on the market, uh, and uh, we didn't really much feel that before, that that's the sublease market and uh, clearly uh, in 2020 we see uh, it was growing and clearly we believe that in 2021 it uh, it's here to stay for some time uh, mainly it's related to the fact that uh, large-scale uh, organizations uh, take into account that many of the, their employees are working from home trying to reduce their costs and optimize their space. So many square meters are going to the market and that will impact the, the market uh, in terms of supply. Uh, it will give, first of all, more flexibility. Uh, it will provide a little bit different product. What we see, it's not just the space. Uh, in many, many cases, it's uh, office with the furniture uh, fully equipped, and uh, in, in our opinion, that mainly will impact uh, competition with uh, B-class buildings, existing office buildings, uh, in terms of supply and accessibility to the project for any uh, end user who would like to take that space. So this is something that uh, we are observing and we see it will be somehow influencing the market across the Baltics. and. Uh, uh, and, and, and those are interesting observations. If we're looking on the demand side, uh, one thing clearly uh, is, uh, uh, it can be highlighted is uh, flexibility that tenants are requiring uh, nowadays. Uh, of course, it's all uh, dedicated and related to COVID-19 pandemics, uh, but uh, we see it's, uh, it's been negotiated very hard and it's understandable. Uh, end users, they would like to have more flexibility in terms of space use, space expansion, reduction, or at least early termination. Uh, and, and we see that uh, it will somehow influence uh, the market as well. In terms of uh, demand uh, as it is, it, uh, it was a moderate demand locally. Uh, uh, we see quite good transactions from existing companies on the market, uh, improving uh, their quality of office space. Uh, there are many companies who were expanding uh, as well, and we also saw newcomers into the market. Uh, and uh, we also ob ob were observing uh, some IT companies based in Minsk uh, show an interest in the Baltics. Uh, and uh, that interest was influenced by the political situation happening in, uh, in the, our neighborhood country. I guess the best example of that uh, would be a um, company called World of Tanks. Uh, it's an it's a online game developer, one of the leading globally. Uh, and uh, they officially announced that uh, they will be relocating 300, 300 employees uh, to their Kiev office. And they also will be establishing an office in Vilnius for 500 employees. And there are a few more examples uh, of, of, of that trend happening. Um, again, uh, GBS segment, newcomers, uh, they are on the market. We, we see it's uh, uh, 
they're looking at uh, some possibilities across Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia. A good example is Norwegian Air uh, Shared Service Center, which uh, landed into Riga office, and they, they're already operating here. So uh, we see that uh, demand is quite active uh, nowadays. But uh, maybe just a few words about the trends, what is happening in, in, in the workplace. And, and that's mainly related to how tenants are seeing their space and, and their needs. And as a colleagues, we did a survey back in spring and in autumn, and we were surveying respondents on uh, how they see their work from home, work from office and vice versa. And uh, during the surveys, we conducted uh, more than 18,000 people, more than 60 countries. And, and we were able to actually compare data, what we gathered in spring and in autumn. And there are a few things what I would like to highlight. Uh, it looks like we adapted to work from home. Uh, and we just see these results comparing of how people are satisfied in spring or during autumn time. Uh, but uh, but people are working more hours. Uh, there is a blur line between work and home. Uh, do people do miss collaboration in person or this so-called office life with informal talks and meetings? And especially we see it among uh, younger employees who are just entered uh, the organization and they are in need of... Uh, mentoring, they are in need of uh, engagement into the projects, and they are in need of uh, career growth. And all of those things are really hard to deliver by the company uh, while working from home. So we do believe work from home will stay, and according to surveys, uh, I would say 80% of respondents were mentioned that they would like to have that opportunity when things are back to normal, as we call it, to have that opportunity to uh, work from home, but one for one, two days per week. Uh, otherwise, still they would like to come back to the office. And another thing to mention, and it's relation between employer and employee. Uh, we see that now it is a big rise on uh, implementation of the technology, how people can work remotely, access data, access information. There is a rise of trust between employer and employee. The employers were forced to give away that option that people can work from home. And we see uh, that's here to stay. And, and, and there, the trends, what we are seeing as well is new social security, as we call it. And it coming from employees. They, in their priorities list, they are putting things like health insurance in their priority list. They are uh, considering how the employer is uh, taking care of hygiene in the office, how they are taking care of things that can influence their health. That's in on their agenda for the employees right now. Those are the trends on the office segment. Uh, and uh, I'm happy to give the floor to Evgenia to speak about retail. Hi, everyone. Uh, last time uh, when we have met, the uh, situation was getting back to normal. Uh, however, the end of the year turned us back to the similar situation, which was in, uh, in March. And what we could see that the COVID really boost to implement the needed changes at the fastest pace to everyone. Uh, tenants uh, due to the new restrictions was forced to close the stores. Uh, however, there was uh, working as a pickup solutions and uh, tenants was implementing also the online uh, platforms and, uh, and adjusting the online sales. And what we could see, the landlords was also trying to do everything uh, very like uh, fr friendly, and uh, they was trying to be uh, very, uh, um, very, um, very fr friendly in terms of the tenants. Uh, therefore, uh, also right now we could see that landlords implemented case by case strategy to um, to different tenants. Uh, however, uh, taking into account that uh, support from the government side are still in process we do not have the common practice for the whole shopping centers in terms of the tenant discounts and uh, ongoing processes. Uh, therefore, uh, tenants, uh, they, therefore we may see that right now the online sales are going uh, up. And uh, overall, we have observed that uh, over the year there was an increase in 26% uh, in online sales. 
Uh, what is interesting also to add uh, that uh, a lot of internet stores right now are registered in Lithuania. Uh, we don't know what the impact will be overall for the whole Baltic countries, but uh, I think it will be very interesting to see uh, this trend and, uh, and uh, have some more detailed results in the, in the end of this quarter or uh, in the middle of the year. Uh, taking into account that, uh, that uh, the situation in the market was quite challenging, still some, some tenants, they used the time as opportunity. And uh, for example, brands like KFC, like Burger King, they concluded the new lease agreement during the COVID time and uh, during the end of this year. It means that some of the brands, they are understanding how that time could be valuable for them. And they are trying to adapt and agree with the landlords on the very uh, good uh, commercial conditions for the upcoming uh, lease, uh, lease agreements. Also, despite the fact that the uh, new restriction came in force, some of the new brands, newcomers also opened in the end of this year. Uh, we may also see from the Saga shopping center opening that uh, such brands like Decathlon and Yahoo Pound has opened in November last year. But also it's very, it is very interesting to see that, uh, for example, Vapiana opened in Riga in January this uh, year and uh, they was forced to work only for deliveries and for the, for the takeaway. However, it was quite interested for the, uh, for the public. And we saw how active uh, those days was, was also for Vapiana. We also saw that uh, Burger King opened in Riga and in Vilnius, uh, and uh, also uh, they are implementing the online strategies and they're working with all deliveries and for takeaway, but still there are some new names on the market and we may see that the Baltic market becoming more and more saturated in terms of the brands. And uh, I think this year will be also very interesting and challenging for us. Uh, but uh, what is very important to, to know that right now is very uh, hard to say what will be the real impact on the, on the vacancy in whole shopping centers and the retail, uh, because uh, everything is changing each day. Uh, however, we see that the, when, when all stores will be reopened and uh, all retail, retailers will be able to work, uh, we really will see the, the, the real impact on the retail segment and uh, the, the vacancy rates as well and, uh, and also the situation in the shopping center. Uh, we may see that the overall the situation in terms of the vacancy comparing to the previous quarter uh, is not changing so significantly. However, we will, uh, we will see what changes will be in the upcoming quarters. And uh, it was very shortly about the retail, and I will give right now the word to my colleague Regimentas, which will comment on the industrial segment. So thank you, Evgenia. Um, welcome, uh, everyone, to the short review of um, probably, arguably, most resilient uh, segment, at least for uh, 2020 in, in real estate, uh, which actually had to, um, quite active closing for all three Baltic countries. And to put it in a few words, I would say, uh, I would say that um, uh, Q4 could be called a simple extension of, uh, of uh, Q3 in, with rather high levels of various uh, requests, attractive transaction activities, um, rather positive outlook towards the future, even besides the fact that COVID-19 cases uh, had been uh, breaking record after record in all three countries towards the end of the year. So now it, if to look uh, at some numbers, um, I, I ask you to take a look at the top uh, left graph in my slide, um, which um, the column shows the development volumes. I completed projects in 2020 Q4 and small balloons on top show the number of, of uh, projects. So Riga this time had as well a big build to own project completed. This, this time it was uh, Rimi Logistics Center expansion for with 42,000 square meters. Uh, and then one spec uh, project completed. Uh, while for Vilnius, it was um, one speculative and one uh, built to own project completed as it was Trans Expeditia, third stage, and Bordova own, own warehouse. Uh, while for Tallinn as well, similar. 
similar um, proportions of, of um, built to built to build to own and speculative. Uh, only um, there was a higher number of projects as there was uh, dominated by uh, mini warehouses. Uh, now, the take up levels uh, looked really promising. Act uh, it, actually, in Vilnius and Kaunas, they uh, exceeded 20,000 square meters uh, in each mar uh, mark in each market, uh, while in Tallinn it was slightly slower. Uh, on the other hand, still um, showing uh, rather good uh, absorption levels in general. And uh, now talking about speculative market, that means that uh, basically a good portion of existing space as well as practically all newly delivered space to the market has been successfully absorbed by the tenants. Uh, and uh, this totally applies to um, bigger speculative projects in Vilnius and Riga. So in Vilnius, it was third stage of Trans Expeditia for uh, almost 13,000 square meters. In Riga, it was uh, Picha Green Park first stage uh, of 20,000, both fully leased till the end of the year. Mm. And from demand perspective, uh, it could be said that uh, Q4 was mostly dominated by uh, logistics and distribution companies, uh, mm, taking up more than 50% of the space overall. For Lithuania, for Vilnius, it was even more. It was more than 70% of, of the space in this quarter. Uh, and all the rest, um, demand was mostly traditional retail, some light manufacturing, some small production and uh, smaller spaces in e-commerce e and e-commerce re related uh, transactions. Uh, so due to this mutual interaction between uh, demand and, um, and supply, um, Rent levels in the fourth quarter, fourth quarter was were stable and expected to uh, remain the same. Maybe uh, except Riga, um, due to the really big and strong um, speculative development pipeline in the nearest uh, in the nearest future, which will probably um, um, that this this is why Riga will probably face some higher um, vacancy levels and maybe even pressure for some rent uh, rent levels rent prices. And uh, expanding a little bit on the nearest future, uh, which is uh, um, reflected in the graphs, top middle and top uh, right graphs in my slide, uh, we could see that um, Tallinn will will be mostly dominated um, as it's as it is now by stock office um, projects and mini warehouse projects, together with built to suit and built to own projects uh, for both production and some logistics uh, companies, which in the um, case of the Riga and Vilnius could probably take up some uh, speculative space. Uh, for Riga, it's, um, it's Riga seems very rather aggressive in terms of speculative development. And we can see that it's uh, more than 90,000 square meters of um, space in, uh, under construction at the moment, and even uh, more than 100,000 square meters are in the planning stage. So, um, so the speculative development seems to be really active in Riga and that's uh, for the nearest future. Whereas for Vilnius, um, Vilnius is probably going to keep some that moderate, but uh, rather, um, rather healthy um, growth of uh, speculative development, uh, having at the moment uh, around 35,000 square meters of uh, space under construction and some projects um, in the planning stage. On the other hand, uh, for Vilnius, we expect um, groundbreaking um, in 2021, expect groundbreaking for at least one or maybe even two uh, large scale stock office projects um, having more than 20,000 square meters GLA and uh, maybe one or two smaller ones. Uh, maybe short, uh, just short remark for Tallinn and uh, stock office uh, topic. Uh, what we notice at the moment and notice in the last quarter of 2020 is that um, it's growing stronger as an as an investment product. And one of the proofs of that of that was a um, couple of larger scale trans transactions um, that totaled around 21,000 square meters uh, and were acquired by two companies, LHV pension funds and one Latvian investor. So we tend to believe that uh, this trend will probably transfer to Vilnius and, and Riga market in the upcoming years as soon as uh, there's sufficient amount of, of product um, created in the market. 
So um, that's how it looks uh, for the nearest future. And now uh, for the vacancy levels, we can see that uh, Tallinn basically uh, faced no changes between the third and fourth quarter of the year. Whereas uh, Riga already noticed the growth from 2.5 to 4.1 percent, mm, and as we already discussed, uh, we'll probably mm, uh, see it even growing even further due to active speculative development. And uh, for Vilnius, it um, decreased from almost 3 percent to 1.8 in uh, the fourth quarter. We expect it to stay to remain stable. On the other hand, it might be uh, might slightly increase uh, on the second half of the year due to the delivery of speculative projects. So it depends uh, on the take up actually. Uh, yeah. So to sum up, it's uh, it's been a good quarter for industrial and logistics. I would say it was a good year in general. Um, but uh, what comforts me mostly is the foundation of the out of the outlook, which is um, I could. Could describe it the following. It's uh, expansion oriented, um, though it's not responsible or too optimistic, um, backed by um, already tested confidence um, uh, of with withstanding some struggles, and on the other hand, um, backed by rather good cash reserves in the accounts rather than overfinancing. So 2021 should be fun as well. So thanks everyone. Giving word back to Eric. Thank you, Rigimantas. Uh, it looks like uh, industrial will be on the optimistic note uh, 2021 and uh, if to combine with Margus uh, suggestion previously that uh, investment flow will go into that segment uh, as well. Colleagues, uh, this is it from our side. Uh, I'm trying to look at the chat and screens. If there are any questions, we are happy to answer. Otherwise, um, as I mentioned before, we will have this video presentation posted tomorrow on YouTube channel. Tomorrow you will have our research delivered uh, to your emails. And uh, we are happy that you uh, were able to join us. And uh, we are happy that uh, you are continue to be with us. And oh, one second. Uh, and there's a question. What is the distress asset definition you use? Shall you announce Riga Plaza as the distress asset deal? Um, Margus, would you like to answer this question? Uh, yes. Uh, so let's say distressed asset in general might be considered as an asset that has a certain kind of problems. Let's say the asset uh, is not performing uh, fully functionally or cannot, uh, mm, let's say, service the uh, existing loans or other kind of uh, other kind of uh, monetary aspects. So, so they, this is this is the main aspect. And as far as uh, as far as uh, we know, Vega Plaza had uh, had certain issues, and uh, and uh, and that's why it might be considered, if not, let's say, fully, then at least uh, corresponding to certain kind of uh, characteristics of a distressed asset. But as I mentioned previously, uh, we still have not seen this kind of full, typical 100% distressed asset uh, situation, like it was maybe 10, uh, 10 11 years ago. So I hope that this this answered your uh, your question. Mm -hmm. Margus, another question on the investment part. Uh, can you share your thoughts on the perspectives for hotel assets in Baltics? How do you see the recovery? Well, it's not maybe a fully fully investment related topic, but um, the fact is, of course, that hospitality sector is the most uh, most hit uh, asset class. There is no no question about that. There are very different kind of opinions uh, when and uh, in what extent uh, extent this uh, segment will recover. Uh, let's say, in general, uh, it is uh, anticipated that it will take at least two three years 
to be back uh, on the level uh, that was uh, one year ago prior to crisis. So, so we hope for the best. Uh, it is very directly tied to, to travel restrictions, uh, how, how this um, COVID situation will be, will be contained, etc., etc. But of course, we see already that there are some uh, hotels that are, are clearly in the distressed situation. Most probably, we will see if at all, if to continue the previous question regarding distressed assets, the probability is rather high that uh, we will see something coming to the market, maybe from that sector. But then again, uh, there are many properties that are, uh, let's say there are no actual kind of uh, financial burdens behind it. And, and, uh, and uh, the sales might occur uh, rather because of the current owners just want to uh, finish with the business leave the market, leave the region, uh, whatever the reason can be. But uh, we will see the deals. Uh, the deals have been happened already in Tallinn. Hopefully, for example, we will also close one deal uh, in, in January in Tallinn. So life goes on. And if to give more encouragement, maybe is that by the, in the end of last year, uh, we also signed in Tallinn one totally new uh, hotel agreement for a totally new hotel with one international um, international operator. So it shows again that uh, uh, this COVID is not here most probably forever. It will go away and uh, life will resume. And as always, every crisis creates also opportunities. So the ones that are uh, ready and aggressive, they probably will use this situation. Thank you, Marcos. Um, I see a few more questions in here. Uh, maybe let me pick up a little bit from a different uh, perspective. Uh, please comment, what is your outlook on development costs? Do you expect any downward correction? Uh, I can try to answer this one, at least uh, looking uh, from Latvia perspective and uh, hearing things were happening in Lithuania and Estonia and uh, taking into account that uh, public sector was always a big client for the construction industry. Uh, it seems like uh, uh, with uh, this COVID uh, money, uh, we call it, uh, uh, there will be more uh, public tenders for construction. Uh, that means uh, construction companies will be busy. And on top of that, uh, very big project, Rail Baltica. So summing up that, uh, somehow we don't feel that uh, there will be decreasing construction costs. It's rather will stay at the same level or they will be increased. We are not an experts on that, but that, that's how we see the market. And that's how we hear from, from the experts uh, in the construction industry. If I may add a comment here, uh, uh, this of course depends, but I can say that at least what we have heard uh, in Estonia, that probably because of, because of the situation, there are cases where uh, construction costs have been a bit uh, lower than they were previously. But this is still quite small change in the, in the development cost and nothing kind of very huge mar margins. I, I cannot uh, kind of, you know, mention that at all. Colleagues, uh, we are running out of time. There, I see there are a few more questions, but uh, we also value your time. Uh, we agree that it's going to be 45 minutes uh, online event. We will answer those questions below in the email separately if uh, they are not anonymous. And uh, thank you very much again for joining us. Uh, Happy New Year again, and let's keep in touch. Bye-bye. Thank you.